Hello everyone and um, welcome to uh, this week's uh, demonstration video of the module assignment. So uh, this is a continuation of our uh, previous presentation about paraline drawings. Specifically what we're working on again is plan oblique drawings and these are sometimes uh, uh, referenced as exonometric drawings. So as we start um, it's good as always to review the textbook information and then um, also the lecture uh, presentation that was provided on this topic. The other elements that we want to do or, or consider are those uh, assignment requirements that are listed in the uh, Canvas software uh, that we're using for the course. So as we start, it's a good idea to get things uh, started by uh, printing out the assignment uh, format information and uh, the example uh, given for the uh, for the assignment this week. Now, as always, this information is not correct. It's not scalable. It's not traceable. But it is a good checklist of things that are going on in the drawing. Remember, just like last week, this is an isometric. It's going to look different than your drawing. But the general view orientation is correct. The general elements that need to be included are correct. But don't get hung up on this little base thing. It's not necessary. Uh, follow the, the drawings that we're going to do. That's probably more appropriate. And then there's some things going on here. Just use it as a checklist for comparison. Not a good copy to do. As we go through the, the video uh, demonstration, I'll, I think you'll see all the elements that you need to provide. So please be uh, thoughtful of the comparables with the example and what we're doing uh, in, these, in this demonstration. So with that being said, um, it is uh, probably appropriate to uh, have uh, all the previous information available. And that includes the floor plans, the sections, interior elevations, and we'll, we'll go through that in more detail. But understand that that information is, is every bit as important in this demonstration uh, and this assignment as it was last week. So uh, just be uh, conscious of the fact that, as always, we're building upon the information done previously to complete this week's assignment. So as we do that, uh, let's uh, turn our attention to making sure that your uh, workstation, or your drawing station is correctly set up. Make sure that your parallel and your T-square have the appropriate functionalities in place and make sure that you have the appropriate tools, uh, which include uh, the uh, 45 degree right triangle, uh, not the 30-60, the, the 45 is the one we want to use. So the 60-30, keep that away, you, uh, that'll just confuse you and you can get off use. We're only going to be working with uh, the 45s uh, and some uh, additional plotted angles. Uh, also, scale, the architectural scale and then materials as you would uh, normally have for this assignment. So, uh, and, and as a reminder, we are using the 11 by 17 uh, for 11 by 17 uh, vellum drawing uh, paper. So we're going to be using that again as well. So um, the uh, other thing that I suggest is, uh, as I have in the past, uh, have a sheet of paper so you can take some notes. If something doesn't seem right, you can you know make a note to yourself, come back to that uh, portion of the video and look at it again. I think we're going to go through uh, this process as we did last week, step by step, and I'll probably include a couple of shortcuts here so that you don't see me uh, drawing uh, laboriously over things that you could be doing without uh, much instruction. So uh, as a result, take notes and uh, pay uh, attention to the uh, video. Now, 
A few words, a few reminder words about what we learned last week, uh, especially as regards to these paraline drawings. These are three-dimensional drawings. They're not 2D drawings. They're not two-dimensional. They're three-dimensional. And so the information that we uh, learned last week will be relevant to uh, the things we're going to look at this week. And so do remind yourself that even uh, based upon the idea that we are showing a three-dimensional object on two-dimensional media, meaning the paper is really only two-dimensional, that we're going to pick up some optical illusions and some distortion. And that distortion is normal. Uh, I'll try to flag it when it looks, uh, when it needs to be flagged uh, so that you can uh, pay attention to it. I don't want you to think the drawing is incorrect simply because of this, uh, these uh, visual uh, anomalies that occur. And so as a result, uh, pay attention to that. Now, a the good thing is, as we saw last week, um, the scale, the size, the proportion all still should be working for you here. We can test by measuring one drawing, our, our multi-view drawing, and applying it to the drawing uh, that we're doing uh, in the assignment. And we can uh, know that the information is still true and correct. So as a result, you know, um, these drawings really are giving us kind of a sense of the three-dimensional object, the, the thing that we're uh, normally seeing in reality. It is not. Uh, those will occur starting next week in the perspective drawings. So this is still a very analytical drawing. And because it's uh, analytical, it gives us an opportunity to compare those very specific features of, of one set of drawings with another. And so it's a very strong tool for the designer to provide a test for how things are working together. This wall to this wall can now be tested graphically and we can see if there's any inconsistencies in the design. So these drawings are, as I mentioned last week, are very helpful for uh, the designer to test what they know about their own work and then uh, their, and to be presented to their colleagues and their team members who they're working with. So it's a good test there. And then um, sometimes you can include some vignette type drawings of, that are three-dimensional of this sort to the contractor if you have something of, of particular uh, complexity that might not be easily shown in the regular multi-view orthographic drawing. So just bear those things in mind. We, we rarely show these to the client. It just kind of uh, blows their mind and they're not really ready for it. Perspectives next week, that's what we show our clients. So as we move forward, I want you to please pay attention to um, you know what we're doing in the video here. Um, and then um, do understand that what we're working with is a rough out and that um, you will ultimately be placing it on a title block uh, with all the appropriate uh, information that goes with that, the labels and the scale and the, the titles and all that. So make sure that you have that available uh, as you're working on this information. Now, some other thoughts that uh, we, we mentioned just in brief, you definitely are going to need the these previous drawings that you've been working on. And the reason is this is our best information for building that um, building this uh, this drawing this week. And so it's important that you understand the connections. Uh, last week, we worked on really an exterior shell that showed what was going on outside the building. This week, we're working on interior uh, exonometric information. And the way that gets done is by cutting away part of the, uh, the shell of the drawing and exposing what's inside. And 
uh, and we can see that a little bit here um, that we've taken off the front and taken off the, the lid or the roof of this thing so we can see right inside. And now we start to see the relationship between the interior and the exterior of the building. So it's not separate things. They are one thing which is different views. So our design work has to consider both interior and exterior applications. Even though this is an interior design class, there's relevance to the building shell and what's going on in the outside. So we have to be thoughtful of that. Additionally, um, we will be using the information that we developed last week. Now, this is the rough out that I did last week. And um, so we can use this information very directly. So we're going to need that um, to shortcut a lot of the work that we would normally have to do. We've already created the shell. We're going to call upon that information again to complete this next uh, assignment. We'll also need the floor plans. This time we'll need the second floor as well as the first floor. We're going to need the section drawings as we, we did last week. So we're going to need this drawing. And instead of exterior elevations, we're going to need at least one or two interior elevations. So we're going to need to go back to the information we developed a couple weeks ago in order to uh, complete this work. So please bear all those things in mind as we prepare ourselves for this week's assignment. So um, again, uh, the rules, we'll touch on the rules briefly at the beginning of the next video, but hopefully you'll be observing the same patterns of, of development that we uh, provided in last week's assignment video, that you're going to see a, a direct relationship to the floor plan and using that to uh, locate where the features are and then using the sections and elevations to provide us the information on the relative heights and placements uh, in the vertical uh, dimension. So as we get ready to start, um, I want to uh, just say, uh, please have all your things ready. We're looking forward to presenting this information. Uh, take notes as necessary, and um, we will uh, move on to uh, move away from this preview and into the actual video uh, a demonstration. Uh, I will see you when we return for the next section. Until then, I'll say so long for now, and uh, thank you.